Welcome to the Zanbergen Report, where wealth strategies and pop culture collide, featuring your distinguished host and certified financial planner, Bart Zandbergen. Welcome to our show of Dream Chasers and Wealth Makers. We are thrilled to be back in the studio today with a new episode of the Zanbergen Report. I'm proud to bring in movers, shakers, and difference makers who are passionate about showing what they have learned and what you need to know today. And today I have a very special guest and friend of mine, Courtney Shepard of Birch Shepard Law. Courtney, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bart. Of course. I'm so happy to be here today to share all of my knowledge and wisdom about family law. Wow. That is very enthusiastic and passionate. <laughs> I love that. Uh, and I, Hey, Paul, you still there? Good to see you again, Paul. I am. I am. You guys are just jumping in. This is old, old friends week here. You forgot about your old buddy, Paul, here. Um, Hi, Paul. Did you see me? I, I pulled you right back in, Paul. <laughs> I like it. I got to say, of all the guests you've had on, that was the best opening any guests have. Usually they just sit around and they, they say, hi. Uh, you know, <laughs> she jumped around. Hi, happy to talk about all my experience in family law. That that was the elevator speech right there. She gave the whole show in 30 seconds. I guess well, so. Well, there so we we're go. Done. <laughs> we're done. Good job, Courtney. <laughs> All right. So, Courtney, I know we have a lot to cover because your your practice has a lot to cover and family law covers um, many things. Some people think, I, I believe, think that family law just has to do with divorce. And I know your practice covers much more of that in family law. When it talks, we cover custody and child um, issues as well. So, um, first of all, let's talk about you. Let's link it all about you. you <laughs> with all a right. name like Court, Courtney, right? Did right. you always want to be an attorney or is this something that just happened? Well, you know, with a name like Courtney, I was born to be an attorney, like you said. But um, ever since I was young, I did want to be an attorney. I always liked trying to convince people of my position. And so I actually found a job that I get paid for to do that. So <laughs> I really do enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Now, did you always want to be a family law or did that evolve? No, that that evolved over time. I actually wanted to be a criminal defense attorney or a prosecutor was really what I wanted to do, work for the district attorney's office. Um, I in, did an internship in law school for the district attorney's office and I really enjoyed it. I loved being in court all the time. However, when I graduated from law school, the district attorney's office wasn't hiring. There was a hiring freeze. So my friend had a job at a family law firm and said, hey, we need an attorney. So I said, okay, I'll check it out. So yeah. I did family law and I've been doing it ever since for almost 16 years now. And I really, wow. really like it. I'm a certified wow. family law specialist. So all I do is family law. And we do everything from divorces, prenuptial agreements, postnuptial yeah. agreements, child support, spousal support, complex business litigation. So for someone who likes to, um, did you say argue or just, or, or debate? What did you say earlier? Argue, probably. Okay, argue. All right. <laughs> so you had to marry an attorney, right? In order That's to, right. From the could stand their ground. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she said convince. Right. I went back and played the transcript. She didn't say argue. She said convince. Oh, she convince. She like convince, convince people. You, pull, Thank you, you can play a transcript Thank you for the that, fast. that fast. Paul? I had to pull it up. That's my job. I went back and looked at it. I wanted to get the correct uh, thing she said. Thank here, you. Here, I like Paul, that. I can ask for the record to be read. That's just right. Like we're, we got, we're in a court of law here. I'm the, uh, I'm the court recorder here. <laughs> that's right. I just, you, I just thought you sat back and ate snacks during our show. You were actually working. <laughs> well, sometimes I do that too. Yeah. <laughs> you better not talk about them, Bart. That's right. <laughs> okay. So, um, I think, like many industries and businesses, practices, there's there's pre-COVID and then there's COVID. I don't think we have post-COVID yet. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of different areas of your business. Let's just talk about courts. What's what's happened? What's changed? Um, what do you want to call it? COVID time. What's changed COVID, COVID time. time versus pre-COVID? Yeah. So right now during the COVID time, the courts have definitely changed. Um, the courts are back open, and so a lot of people think that the courts are not open, but the courts are actually open. Everything in family law in Orange County is being handled virtually. So we are making court appearances via WebEx or Microsoft Teams, and we are doing trials. I've done probably five to ten trials now via Teams and WebEx, and so that's very um, 
interesting. We had to adjust. Everything is done virtually. So we submit all of our exhibits to the court virtually. And it's hard because your client's not sitting next to you. And so you can't kick them under the table when they say something stupid, you know, because they're not with you. (laughs) None of my clients ever say anything stupid, though. Of course not. (laughs) Now, that's got to be challenging. And then plus, aren't you, are you ever used to just like kind of walking around and it's and just having more I don't know, mobility as opposed to just sitting behind a camera? Yes, it's, it, yes, definitely. It's definitely very hard because you have to sit in one spot to do the court appearance. It's hard. You can stand up, but you can't really walk around if you wanted to try to present something and you're tied to the computer and yeah. you have to be very computer savvy in order to show your exhibits to the court effectively. So it's definitely been a learning experience. Wow. I think business in general will probably change after COVID, you know, like, you know, the work from home, et cetera. Do you see a day where it's normalized again back in court or you think this will be somewhat of a, of a accepted practice going forward? Um, I do think that the courts are going to go back in person as soon as they can. Um, My information I'm receiving is that the judges would really like to be back to in person. I think it's hard for the judges to stare at a computer screen for eight hours all day long doing these WebEx. I think they really would like to be back in person, seeing the witnesses, having the paper exhibits as soon as possible, as soon as it's safe. Okay. All right. Um, And um, this might not be a fair question, but does the court trials, does that apply across the board, not just family law, right? I don't know what other um, areas of law are doing. I think criminal right now is in person. They are doing in-person trials, actually, in criminal court is my understanding. I don't know what other areas of law are doing, though. Um, So let's kind of just maybe go down the list. So, you know, custody is a big thing of what you do, right? Yes. Um, And it's my guess that, you know, things have probably changed. You know, one thing that comes to my mind is someone that's paying custody, child custody or support, spousal support. Let's say they've lost their job due to to COVID. Um, what kind of things are happening there? Yeah, so that's a very common issue that we're seeing right now. And we are having to file modifications of child support and spousal support with the court right now to lower or change people's support orders because they have been their business income has gone down because of COVID or they lost their job because of COVID. So it's a very, very prevalent issue that we're dealing with right now, as well as custody issues because of COVID. And some of the custody issues that we are seeing is, you know, if one parent has maybe an autoimmune disease or asthma or hypertension, and they're concerned because now some schools are going back to in-person or doing a hybrid formula. And so, you know, is there, does their child have a, a compromised immune system and could they be at risk? Could the child be at risk? Could the parent be at risk? And so these are some of the issues that are we're currently faced with. And we don't know how the judges are viewing this issue yet because it's brand new. Mm. Mm. Can I Are jump you? in? Can I jump in and give you two quick one example of that? What she's talking about here, custody sure. issues. Sure. I have a gardener. I hate to admit, but I have a gardener. So I'm lazy. And we were talking the other day. I said, I know he's divorced. I know he's a couple of little girls. I said, How are you handling this? He said, Well, we had joint custody, but I've given full custody to my wife because she was a teacher and she's laid off huh. and she's home all day and she's teaching the kids. Because they're home, and I can't. Yeah. I, otherwise, I don't work. So I don't know if that was just informally or formally, but they changed the custody arrangement because she could stay home and teach them all day, and he couldn't. Yeah, that's a huge issue, and that's great that they were able to work together to to do that and solve that problem instead of having to hire attorneys and run into court. And that's a huge issue is because now kids are home and parents can't work and teach and caretake all at the same time. So that's definitely a big issue that's happening right now. Oh. Would you say, are you busier now than you were before COVID with, with the, I mean, with this kind of stuff, I'm sure stacked with your, with your normal caseload? Yes, the, it, it is becoming a lot busier. It wasn't as busy in like when COVID first started because the courts were closed from March until May. And so um, things slowed down a lot because people, um, couldn't go to court. So 
but now it's picked back up and now we have these custody issues that are starting to appear, the support issues. And so everybody now wants to get into court and have these issues addressed. It's definitely getting um, a lot busier. Um, actually, I didn't realize the courts were closed for so long, meaning virtual as well as in person. Like now. They were closed. Yes. Like yeah. closed. <laughs> Did I didn't you, uh, even know that could happen. <laughs> Did you take up a hobby? <laughs> <laughs> no, I still worked a lot. <laughs> still a lot to do. Um, you know what we talked about uh, as we were prepping for this, it would be fun maybe to kind of go over a list of common myths, um, specifically to California. And I know that, that that some of these myths might be state specific. And I think some of these myths myths might be created because they, of other states. So um, what do we call it? Top five myths. You want to do that? Yeah, that, that's a um, good subject. So I think the most common myth that I hear and am asked probably every other day is if I'm with my partner or boyfriend for more than seven years, am I considered married in, in California? Is that considered a common law marriage? And the answer is no. There is no common law marriage in California. It's been abolished since don't quote me, but I think 1895. So a long, long time. So there yeah. is no common law marriage in California. California is a community property state, uh, meaning everything acquired during the marriage is community property um, to be equally divided upon divorce. There are exceptions to that, obviously, but that's the general premise in California. So um, before we go forward, so, and this is related. So let's say someone... Um, cohabitated were a couple for 10 years, common law state, they acquired things together. How does, how does that get split if they're not married? Well, so it would depend on what type of assets they acquired. And so if they acquired a house, then they, because they weren't married, they couldn't take title as community property. So they would probably take title. There's joint tenants or tenant, with yeah. tenants, tenant in common. So they would just divide it pursuant to how the how they did the deed and that um, how they yeah. filled out the deed of trust and then with other assets if they have a joint bank account I guess they would have to to figure that out. There's also um, if one person um, promises to support another person, there's a civil action which is called a Marvin case um, for. Um, where you promise to take care of somebody and you can actually sue them civilly for that. It's a civil contract um, that you can try to seek similar rights to if you, as if you were married, but you're not married. Was that the famous uh, Lee Marvin Palamon that case? Is, right. That is the, the famous the, Lee Marvin case. The rough, tough Lee Marvin, one of my favorite actors from the 40s and 50s. Yes. Did, um, who won that case? Was it, did he, did he have to pay based on a promise? I, I, is don't that remember. The, we don't practice. The, we don't, don't do Marvin law. I don't oh, because think, it's uh, it's outside of family. It's law. civil. There's actually a oh, jury trial that got it. does that. I'll look yeah, it up, but a, I don't think it was. But his wife, uh, his his palimony, his, when it was palimony. Michelle, whatever her last name was, went on to live with Dick Van Dyke for the next thirty. Oh, really? Years. Yeah. Paul, you where, where did this come from? This, <laughs> come this on. trivia comes from <laughs> like flowing <laughs> out. Yes. Well. Hey, Courtney. On the remaining myths. Yes. Don't tell us the answer and make Paul and I answer and see if one of us either. Oh of us no! Okay, open. good. That's a good I'm game out of this. So, in California, are you divorced in six months after one day, six months, and one day after the person is served? Are you automatically divorced? So you're saying if I am married and I want to divorce somebody, if I just serve them the notice that says this is like a Muslim country, you say I'm divorced three times and it's over. That's right. In California, I'm, well, you're, it sounds strange. I would have said no, but the fact that you're saying it, I must guess I'm yes. Going, I'm yeah. going with no. No is the correct answer. Oh, okay. So Yay. in <laughs> in California, there's what's called a six month waiting period. So you the you cannot be divorced sooner than six months, mm. and one day after the other person is served with the petition for dissolution of marriage, and um, a lot of people believe that. You can be, you're automatically divorced six months and one day after the petition is served. And um, so I get asked that question a lot. Um, and why would you care exactly? It's just because you want it over or is there some you want to get remarried maybe or something? And so you can't get married until you're formally divorced. Is that why? 
Yeah, there's, yes, those are two of the biggest reasons. So one biggest reason is they use, the parties usually hate each other. Yeah, and right. that's they why they're getting divorced. They just want to be divorced. <laughs> to be divorced. <clears throat> and two is because one party wants to get remarried. And right. you can actually bifurcate the divorce process so you can get divorced before you finalize the division of the assets. Mm. So we can we can do that. And some people want to do that because they want to be divorced. They want to get married again. So that happens more often than not. And the obvious question is why? But no, that's okay. <laughs> uh, hey. Can I ask another question since we've got a rare chance here? I know Bart's got a million of them, but i got to come on. <laughs> Bart, Let's, you're being, like, taken right. over. Come, yeah, this, this, this happens. Come on, <laughs> Bart. We, it's a rare chance. I was just looking at the news. Uh, and uh, Angelina Jolie was taking her kids to Target in the midst of a, a, a deteriorating divorce that's going on between the two of them that's been going on for a while. And apparently the issue is, according to the tabloids, that uh, we're doing this in whatever this is, uh, September of 2020, if you're listening to it later, the right. supposedly the issue that divides them right now is two things. One, she's pissed off that he's running around with young girls and flaunting it, so he's, she's going to stick it to him. And two... <laughs> And two, that she wants to, she's willing to do joint custody, 50-50, but she wants to move to London. And he's like, ain't much of a 50-50 split if you're, I'm here and you're in London, and he's fighting it. Uh, talk right. about that. How do you, how do you figure out, uh, we're, we're going to do a 50, amiable split, we're going to do joint custody, but I wanted to be in uh, Tibet. <laughs> Well, in Angelina Jolie's case, you know, there is a lot of money there. Right. So could a 50-50, obviously not a traditional 50-50 custody schedule where you do week on, week off um, type of schedule couldn't work. And unless they reach an agreement, it's going to be very hard to do a 50-50, so to speak, custody schedule unless she gets all of the school year time and then he gets all of the holidays all of the summer break and anytime if the kids come here then he could have them or if he goes there he could visit them otherwise they're going to have to have if they can't reach an agreement on some type of shared custody plan they're going to have to go to court do probably a custody evaluation where a psychologist psychiatrist interviews everybody and then makes a recommendation to the court of what's in the best interest of the children for the custody schedule. How horrible. So they're going to argue, ask each kid, who do you want to live with? Depending on the age. Well, they don't really, depending on the age of the children, um, they ask the children where they would prefer to live, and then they determine whether or not that's in the best interest, and then the psychiatrist makes a recommendation to the court. Wow. My question is, we're talking about people who are not in the normal sphere, right, right financially. So let's just say an ordinary Joe and Jane um, come to a fit, some sort of custody agreement. Um, there's gotta be some laws that protects one spouse from the other spouse moving out of state or out of the area. Is it, or, or is there not? Yeah. So in um, it, so the answer is depends while the case is pending, neither party is allowed to leave the state of California without written permission or court order. So neither parents allowed to, Neither ch either, no children can leave the state. The parents can leave the state all they want. It's restricting the children from leaving the state because they take them and go. They don't come back. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so, if they're in the end, if their divorce decree says you can't travel out of state or you can't move, it will depend on what their agreement says. But while the case is pending, a child, a parent cannot relocate a child out of the state. Okay. All right. Um. I, I, I know somebody that had my one of my best friends who is an attorney himself uh, got divorced and his two boys, his wife wanted to move to Washington, D.C. And she was threatening all sorts of action. I'm taking the kids. We got joint custody. He says, I don't care. Come visit him in Washington. I'm moving. And they had to go to court and battle it all out. Yeah, it, it does. It becomes a long trial. And then, so if you can work it out. That's probably the best instead of leaving the decision to a third party judge who doesn't know you or your kids. So we always try to settle if we can. But if we do need to litigate, I love going to court and litigating. <laughs> loves it. You, you know, before you get to the next myth, yeah. would you she loves convincing you people? Yeah, right. <laughs> I think you said something that's very profound. And I think this 
applies to all legal stuff and and maybe as a litigator you wouldn't agree but do you think it's often in best interest of all parties say hey, if you can work it out some way let's do that let's arbitrate let's mediate let's not put it in the hands of judge jury all that 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 would be a common sense solution correct or the best solution normally it is a common sense solution and we always try to have the parties come to an agreement because it's usually better because they're in control of it they are in control they know what they they need they know what they want they know what's best for their children and so if we can reach some type of compromise and we always say that a good deal a good settlement is when both parties are mad right because neither one of them got their way right so um you know if we can we always try to settle but sometimes you can't there's some cases that you can't settle and so you have to go to court and then the judge gets to decide yep that makes sense yeah all right throw us another myth all right um in so you guys are going to answer this one okay yeah ready do you need a reason to get divorced no, mm. no, because it's no fault now. It used to have to have a reason, but right. I think we're no fault now. Yes, California is a no fault state, so it doesn't matter why you're getting divorced. Um, I have a lot of clients say, "Well, he cheated, or he did this, or he smokes pot, or he drinks too much." They've been I talking about. Wait sure. a minute, they've been talking about me again here. There, right? <laughs> <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they want to make sure the court knows that and. It doesn't matter. Doesn't it matter. doesn't matter. You do not need any reason in California to get divorced. Um, when it was yeah. not a no uh, uh, when it wasn't that way, did you have to prove your case? So, in other words, if uh, if they couldn't prove that I drank too much or ran around or whatever, then the reason for the divorce is void, and they cannot get a divorce. Then I don't really know the answer to that question ah, because so that ever since I've been practicing, it's been no fault. <laughs> and so I don't know anything else. Um, I don't know. Um, I've heard like New York, I believe, is a fault state. And I, I don't know. I don't let's, even know if New York's still a fault state or not. I don't know. Let, let's Sorry, take the, I can't answer that question. All right, and, That's all right. right. Let's, um, um, I like that you acknowledge what you know and don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's um, rare for the Let's attorney. take the definition of no fault one step further. So fault would be, hey, there's a reason too. But the other would be same person. Hey, um, I'm going to take it from the other side. Hey, my wife cheated. So I should, you know, I should get more or I should get some of the assets. That doesn't play at all either, right? Doesn't matter what the other spouse did. It's still community property, 50-50, just generally speaking, correct? Correct. Right. It doesn't matter. You don't get more because the other person cheated. But it might affect your uh, custody, wouldn't it? So if I want to show that you're a heavy drinker, then I that would affect whether or not it wouldn't. I still get 50 50 split, but I might get 100 percent of the kids. Well, so the if there is a so that goes to the that would go to custody. And if there's an alcohol issue, then definitely that issue is before the court because that affects the best interest of the children. And when making a custody order, the court looks at what is in the best interest of the children. And if one parent is a heavy drinker and drives drunk and passes out and the children the child is young you know that we can't have that happening so yes that that in that regard yeah. the alcohol would be an issue for the court to consider different subject but but related um okay next myth <laughs> yes this is fun um all really? right. Yeah. Does mom always get custody in yes. California? Yes no. yes 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 no. <laughs> no. always no According to all my friends, yes. No. No, the answer is no. Um, no, the mom doesn't always um, get custody in California. And now, even more, we're seeing in Orange County, unless there's a reason not to share the children 50 50, if you have to show a really good reason that it's not in the best interest of the children to have an equal timeshare, the courts are really um, leaning. Um, towards equal timeshare. Good for them, because I think for too long, dads were driven out of the whole process. The assumption was that the woman is the caregiver and the guy is the bread maker, and that certainly right. has changed a lot in the last hundred years, right? It, it has changed a lot, So, and the courts, I think, recognize that. So, 
and some sure. judges, it depends also a lot on the judge that you get, but most of the judges now are very... Do they still have these judges? I read about them every so often that sit and lecture people from the bench and tell them, you know, give them their, well, you, if only you two had done this or something or whatever, and give you some, you know, the, 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 I hear all sorts of crazy stories, that they, the, the, how you dress or what you act like, and they, they give you a lecture, you're like you're your dad or something, or just, hey, you're the judge, just decide, quit. I don't need anybody <laughs> telling me what I could or should have done here. Yeah. Well, they do, and <laughs> and I understand your perspective, but I don't necessarily agree with it. Um, the judges see a lot, and especially um, I do handle a lot of high-conflict divorces, and the high-conflict divorces when children are involved are really bad mm. and detrimental to the children. I get that, yeah. And so the judges are trying to take that opportunity to tell the parties, hey, look, I see this every day, and if you two don't start getting along – there's going to be negative consequences to your children who will then have consequences when they're an adult and you don't want that to happen. And so I think that to a certain degree, it's good for people to hear other than from their attorney. I think it's good, you know, when it's when it's appropriate um, for the judges to to do that. Great. I know that we're almost out of time, but yeah. Paul took some of the show, so I'm going to take a minute. Go or ahead. Paul. <laughs> this is too good. We won't cut this off. This is good. We'll give you five more minutes. Clock's ticking. Five, five, five more. more minutes. You go. Okay. You might get two more myths in. All right. Do you have, do you have another, or did oh. I exhaust your list? Oh, no. Um, let me. Oh, well, so she wasn't ready. So. Is, I am ready. I have it right here. If the parties have 50-50 custody, does that mean that neither parent will pay child support to the other? No, the answer is no. No, because that's based on money, I guess, not difference in comp or their income, right? I'll right, ask you. A lot of... I'll ask you a myth that goes sort of like with the previous one. Combine those two myths. Another couple minutes from him. Do almost. women mostly right. get? <laughs> do women get more child support than men do these days? Still, is it still most men pay and the women collect? It it no. It totally depends. So if the women is the higher wage I'm living in the Perry Mason days here. You you are. I don't know. Are are you in 2020? (laughs) Well, the last time I dated, Ronald Reagan was president. So it's been a while since I (laughs) dealt with any of this stuff here. Okay. So no, child support is a mathematical formula that's based on the the timeshare of the children and the income. And there's a lot of other factors that go into it of the parties. And so- it really depends on the income of the parties. I had um, a friend years ago who said it's very simple how the court decides uh, um, uh, alimony: the man pays and the woman collects. He said the woman, <laughs> yeah. the the the, uh, the guy, uh, she gets the gold and he gets the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, Paul. Yeah, that's bad, Paul. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. That's bad, you do. <laughs> All right, one one more myth before we uh, close up with a couple questions I have for you. All right. Um, so, every the, is mediation the best option for everybody? I hate absolutes. And if you didn't say everybody, I would have said is yes. Medi- is mediation a good option? If you say is medi- mediation a good option for everyone, I say no. Right. Mediation is great, but in order to effectively have mediation, both parties have to be able to speak up. Both parties have to trust each other. There has to be full disclosure. One of the parties can't be in a superior financial position and the other spouse doesn't even know where they bank. So a lot of people say, oh, I want to mediate. I want to mediate. But sometimes the case isn't right to mediate because one of the spouses is left completely in the dark and they just totally rely on whatever the other spouse says. And in that case, because you have one mediator and the parties typically some parties during a mediation consult with an attorney on the side, which I highly recommend, but some parties don't. And they, and there's usually in that um, type of relationship, a power imbalance. And one party is the one that controls and the other one is like submissive. And so that relationship will exist during mediation. And then a year or so afterwards, The person who was not in control realizes they got taken advantage of, and then they come to an attorney like myself and say, fix this, and they end up spending a lot of money trying to fix what they did in mediation because now they have regrets. So here's one one of my myths. In family law, there are two types of uh, practices, the type that Courtney does, 
where she cares. She's trying to find the best solution, she's trying to find an amiable solution that works for everybody here at a reasonable cost and reasonable period of time. And then there is these other ones out there, and we all know who they are, and all they're there is to punish the other side. <laughs> I am pissed off. I am going to hire that mad dog, Bart Zanbergen's firm, and I don't. we're just going to ruin him or her. We're going to just absolutely drive him into the ground. Is that true, or is this too many That's too true. much TV? It is true. That, okay. that happened. Okay. Definitely happened. Okay. See, wasn't a myth. No, that's not a myth. No, I'm not going to share my personal story, but I'm very familiar with that other. <laughs> <laughs> you know that other firm. <laughs> I know that other side. Um, all right. I, I am anxiously awaiting to ask you my final thought question. Before that, uh, Courtney, yes. um, tell everybody how to get a hold of you in case they have questions or may need. Oh, you. thank you. Yeah. So you can reach me. My office phone number is nine four nine. Five zero two forty four hundred. You can email me if you have questions. My email address is my first initial C and my last name Shepard C Shepard S H E P A R D at ocdivorce dot net. You can also visit our website at ocdivorce dot net. Look at the look at that name you 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 secured. Good one. That's right. <laughs> All right. All right. So my final thought question is: um, What is your ultimate lesson learned over your career? as an attorney <laughs> well <laughs> sometimes not everyone tells the truth <laughs> what <laughs> what <laughs> oh my goodness and sometimes so, that sometimes that must can be your client right sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah sometimes so that's kind of what i learned so you know to go back to paul i think he referenced uh, ronald reagan you know ronald reagan's <laughs> famous saying trust but verify right. um i think is very important and you need to do the also other lesson um, on a more serious note um, is the divorce process is very emotional but it's also a business decision and so I've um, from doing this as long as I have I've learned that and I tried to communicate that to my clients to say look I understand you know this is very emotional but you also need to think about your future and plan for the future and the division of your assets and the amount of support that you'll receive is what we need to focus on and the custody and that, um, you know, the well-being of your child also. So we need to kind of focus on it and kind of try to think of it like a business decision. So I try to communicate that and explain that to my clients and refer them to people like Bart for, you know, to seek out financial help to help them plan for their future after the divorce. So those are two things that I've learned that I feel are very and important that is oh, great and i have to ask you and paul did you somehow this whole reagan thing that did he leave it sounds like you guys kind of pre <laughs> we did that. We, we, this has all been set up a long time ago here. <laughs> <laughs> i talked to weeks paul weeks. like weeks ago <laughs> I said, what would help you the most courtney she said any reagan references you can work in <laughs> always good <laughs> all right now the final and most important question yes. is courtney you and i met because of our passion for food and wine mm. yes um and on um, groups that we belong to so my question to you what is your favorite wine Ooh. um that's a good question anything wet know. wet or red <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> um i you know, right while now, you're I'm thinking really... that, Bart told me when he was on his show, because he's quite the connoisseur and obviously a uh, sommelier and all the certified sommelier, and I thought he was going to give me some highfalutin answer. And he he said his go-to solution, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is champagne. He loves champagne. Oh, I love champagne, too. I like right now, I'll just say, I like Robert Sinsky's wines, and I'm really fond of their Pinot uh, Noir right now. That's mm -hmm. really what I've been drinking. But on a lighter note, to follow up what Paul said, and this is going to sound really bad, but I'll say it anyway. Say um, it, say it. So <laughs> I was getting my hair cut when they opened recently, and my hairstylist asked me if I wanted some rosé. Mm. So I said, okay, and she poured it out of a can, okay? <laughs> and and put it, it was and damn it was, good, wasn't it? <laughs> and it? Yes, and it's a sparkling rosé that's not too sweet. And it's from Trader Joe's, and it's amazing. <laughs> Three <laughs> buck Chuck. Yeah, I'm now. telling you. They, I can't remember the name. I think it's called like Simply Wines or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's their rosé, and I, I love it. <laughs> so um, she just blew all her credentials out the window. There. No, 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 no. Actually, actually, I will add to that. They don't hold uh, it against me. Um, am I? Can I say where I ate? 
Uh, sure. Am I allowed yeah, to do that? Give him, yeah, a free, so, give him a free tag. Uh, maybe, a we get, maybe we get a free lunch out of it. Okay. So the place called Burger Lounge in, um, <laughs> in that it is organic and it has grass fed beef. So that was a place I went to. I brought um, my daughter for her fifth birthday. She wanted cool. to go They have burgers and fries and ice cream. Anyway, um, much to my surprise, they offered wine. So mm. I said, why not? And then much to my surprise, it came in a can. Mm. I'm like, yeah. oh. And it was a Pinot Noir, which is my go-to red. And I'm like, well, I'm here. I bought it. I didn't know. Right. It was really good. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> so forget uh, forget jug wine. It's canned wine. Canned, canned wine is wine. the future. Though. Not box. Canned. Yeah, yeah not Sorry. box. That's yeah. totally different. Right. So you uh, should try the canned ro- sparkling rosé from Trader Joe's in a can. Or the canned Pinot. All right. We've learned so much today. <laughs> we learned a little bit about law. <laughs> Just <laughs> <Exactly>. a little. Just a little. All right, so we've gone way over. Paul, thanks for uh, allowing us to go a bit over. <laughs> Only if she Great. promises to bring some of that into the studio next time when we crunch can reconvene here. Ro- I'll bring rose. you a can of sparkling rosé, Paul. That's it. <laughs> it right. comes in a four-pack. I love it. Okay. <laughs> hey. All right, Courtney, thanks again for uh, taking the time. This was very, very educational. So thank, thank you, you Bart. Appreciate. My pleasure. Thank you, Bart. Thank you, Paul. All right. Have a good day. All right, well, thanks for, uh, to everyone who has tuned in, and we look forward to being in virtual studio again next week. Cheers. Tune in next week for the latest edition of the Zanbergen Report, Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Catch up on our recent shows by visiting podcast.bartzanbergen.com. The Zanbergen Report is also available on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Interested in being a featured guest on our show or have a question you'd like to hear us answer? Email podcast at bartzanbergen.com. The contents of this podcast episode do not constitute an offer of securities or a solicitation of an offer to buy securities and may not be relied upon in making an investment decision related to any investment offering Access Wealth Management LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Access does not warrant the accuracy or completeness of the information contained herein. Opinions are our current opinions and are subject to change without notice. Prices, quotes, rates are subject to change without notice. Generally, investments are not FDIC insured, not bank guaranteed, and may lose value. Brokerage services are offered through to Sarah Capital, member FINRA.